Hello everyone, my name is Christian and welcome to my hobby blog. Today I'm very excited to be doing the 13th review in my 31 Days of Japanese Films series. I think it's the 13th, if not, I'll have it the correct one on the title. But today we are going to be talking about 1974's uh, film directed by Masaru Konuma. And this is a film that was made by the Nikats. Uh, studio, which is a very major studio in Japan. And this was the first sort of erotic film that uh, tackled the topic of sadomachicism. And what, what movie am I talking about? Today we are talking about Flower and Snake. This is a 1974 film, as I've already said. And this is uh, a very quick film. It is 74 minutes long. The story is basically about uh, the son of a adult films producer who is a woman who has caused trauma in her son and that he walked in on her being uh, having sex with somebody with a GI American uh, soldier and he catches her doing that has a lot of trauma from that and he still lives with his mother many years later when the movie starts and from there, we have this character who just cannot find a woman to marry or even find a woman who wants to be with him. Nobody wants to be near him. He gets uh, PTSD anytime he sees anything sexual. So the entire premise of this film is this guy works at a company whose boss is sexually frustrated because his wife will not have sex with him. For pretty good reasons, because we come to find out that the wife is just completely miserable in a relationship with this man. And this business guy is just completely uh, perverted. He does not understand the concept of consent. And this is for sure your sexploitation type of film. This really leans into that. Um, overall, what do I think of this movie? Well, I guess a uh, couple more, I guess, interesting tidbits about the story. So the business owner, he hires uh, this uh, main character whose name is Makoto. And he is basically hired to break in uh, his wife. And so the entire story is about him learning how to have a uh, very kinky and just um masochistic uh sex and once he does that then he is able to break her in i i hate to say those words but that's what the entire film is about it is very problematic it is not uh the most politically correct film to watch and uh, it's okay. Um, overall, I thought this movie was good. I think it's one of the most beautifully shot uh, Nikats erotic films that I've seen. I don't know how many I've seen, maybe three at most, uh, mostly during school that I saw them as supplemental uh, watches. But the thing that's really interesting about this film is that this was sort of the first uh, hard... Um, perverse erotic film i don't know how to describe it or classify it but this is one of the few films that really goes you know beyond what other films have done when it uh displays sexual uh activities relating to uh ropes chains uh just bondage in general and I thought this movie was just okay. I watched it last night. I didn't really have too much to think about or talk about with this film. I think the performances are very well played. Uh, the cinematography, of course, I mentioned earlier, but that's, you know, that's very good. Uh, they really, you know, lean into the cinematography, which is nice. Um, there's just... I'm sorry to say, but there's really not much to talk about with this film. I thought it was good. I think it's worth the watch. Uh, and considering that this is 1974, so it's after Female Prisoner Scorpion, which I reviewed last. But this movie in particular started um, sort of the more 
hardcore uh, erotic films that we see from this point and on. Uh, this was the first film to do that. So I thought that was, uh, I guess, culturally important to uh, put this film into uh, the series because it is important and the overall sort of um, timeline of Japanese films. Because I don't watch many erotic films at all, really, if any. And I had this one. I had never seen it before. I got it in a synapse cell or synapse uh, cell. And I was like, you know what? I have to at least mention uh, the Nikats uh, studio. And... You know, they had their golden age in the 50s, uh, the 60s. They were uh, tapering, tapering off quite a bit. And then the 70s came around and they really leaned into the pinky, uh, pinky films, which if you don't know what the pinky films are, those are your erotic films that were made for sexual pleasure for the viewers. And that's what uh, this sort of tag on this front is. Is the Nikats uh, Erotic Films Collection. So they made many, many films like this. Uh, so if you're into this type of film, I would recommend it. If not, you're not missing much. And I'm sorry to say, but that's really all I have left to say today. But thank you so much for watching. And please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this film, if you've seen it. If not, uh, is this a film that sounds interesting to you? Uh, this is a very typical sexploitation film, but it is one of the first, so I think it's pretty uh, important in that regard and why I included it. So thank you all again. Good night.